God Almighty's Word. Fellow believers, we know the Holy Bible is the absolute truth, and that it is God Almighty's Word in written form. God Almighty breathed, and God Almighty inspired. The absolute only text of God Almighty's Word. Period. Yes, I know, there are many different translations. Examples, King James Version, the New King James Version, Holman Christian Standard Bible, New American Standard Bible, New International Version, to name a few. But does it really matter which translation we read? No. When we read the Holy Bible, God Almighty speaks to us through his words we read. But also, God Almighty speaks to our hearts as we read his words. That's right. God Almighty reveals himself to us through his words. Amazing, huh? As we read the Holy Bible, God Almighty reveals to us what he wants us to know at that point in time. Meaning, when we read those same scriptures the next time, he will reveal something new. How exciting! Remember, Jesus Christ abides within us through the Holy Spirit. Therefore, Jesus Christ walks with us, the Holy Spirit teaches us, and most importantly, God Almighty watches over us. Always. Galatians 1, 11 through 12 But I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man. For I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it, but it came through the revelation of Jesus Christ. Fellow believers, in Galatians 1, 11 through 12, Paul was actually referring to himself, but he may as well have been speaking about each of us. Because since Jesus Christ abides within each of us, he is revealing himself to us and revealing himself to others through us. Remember, we are Jesus Christ's light upon this world, and our goal is to let his light shine so brightly through us that people see him, Jesus Christ, instead of us. Romans eight sixteen and 17. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God Almighty. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, Jesus Christ, that we may also be glorified together. 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17b. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? For the temple of God is holy, which temple you, believers, are. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own, for you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. 2 Corinthians 1, 21 and 22. Now he who establishes us with you in Christ, and has anointed us, is God, who also has sealed us and given us the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, in our hearts as a guarantee. 
Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. In him, Jesus Christ, you, believers, also trusted, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. Ephesians 2, 19 through 22. Now, therefore, you, believers, are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles, Jesus' disciples, and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom the whole building being fit together grows in a holy temple in the Lord, God Almighty, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. My fellow believers, I reiterate, Jesus Christ walks with us, the Holy Spirit teaches us, and most importantly, God Almighty watches over us so we could not ask for any better teachers of God Almighty's word. Could we? Revelations 3.12 He, believers, who overcomes, I, Jesus Christ, will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write on him my new name. Revelations 3.10 Because you have kept my command to persevere, I, Jesus Christ, will also keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world, Satan's world, to test those unbelievers who dwell on the earth. 2 Thessalonians 2, 6 and 7 And now you know what is restraining, that he, the Antichrist, may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work through Satan. Only he the Holy Spirit, who now restrains, will do so until he, the Holy Spirit, is taken out of the way. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17 For the Lord himself would descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, God Almighty. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we, living believers, who are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord Jesus Christ in the air. And thus, we believers shall always be with the Lord Jesus Christ. Hebrews 12, 22-24 But you, believers, have come to Mount Zion, heaven, and to the city of the living God, God Almighty, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, God Almighty's holy angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, who are registered in heaven, to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of just men, believers, made perfect to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. The being caught up together may occur in the next millisecond, 
so there is no time to waste. Get out there, show you care, and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Suddenly, we believers will be no more, for Jesus Christ has taken us. Amen.